Today we're talking all about caffeine and performance enhancement. Now the first place we need to start is looking at adenosine receptors and their ergogenic effects. Now ergogenic effect just means a performance enhancing effect. So caffeine can bind to adenosine receptors due to its similar structure. Now specifically it's going to be binding to A1 and A2A adenosine receptors. Now this results in several physiological changes such as increased heart rate, lowered perceived exertion, increased alertness, subjective, uh, sorry, reduced subjective evaluations of pain, and then also it helps preserve motor unit firing rate, which is really important for force production. So essentially what this means is that the aggregate effect of you know, caffeine consumption, if done in the correct doses, is an increased ability to generate and maintain high force and power output during strenuous physical activity. Next, we can look at strength power as well as endurance. Now, calcium is a really important, uh, it plays a really important role in muscular contraction. So it's actually released by the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which increases nitric oxide via the activation of the endothelial nitric oxide synthase. Now, caffeine increases muscle calcium release, and that can increase force production and also increase your fatigue resistance. Caffeine does appear to have a small to moderate effect that's beneficial on aerobic performance. And it's also been shown to increase power output as well as strength measured in tests like vertical jump as well as 1RM strength. Now, let's talk about sources, dosing, timing, as well as habituation. Now, current dosing recommendations are roughly three to six milligrams taken about 45 to 60 minutes prior to training. Now, most of the beneficial effects are seen when you're on the upper limit of that dosing, which is about five to six milligrams per kilogram. There's lots of different ways you can take caffeine, for instance, caffeine pills, energy drinks, coffee, etc. Now, the issue with this is that there's significant variance in accuracy of dosing. Even if we're using the same thing, such as coffee, that's going to vary dramatically or can vary dramatically in terms of dosing, depending on what type of beans are being used, how long they're roasted, and a whole host of other things. So generally what I recommend are caffeine pills with water because you can actually control the dosing and it's a little bit more precise in that regard. Regarding habituation, the findings are a little bit mixed, but there still does appear to be a potential habituation effect, which means that acute ingestion might not necessarily translate to long-term performance benefits. So, Prioritizing using caffeine during specific, very important training sessions or very difficult training sessions could be a very beneficial way to get an additional benefit out of it. Or if you are planning on using it for an extended period, making sure that you're cycling off for several weeks at a time to resensitize to caffeine use and then coming back to it after. So hopefully that helps you guys and hopefully you get much better results with your caffeine utilization.